Hey, what's up everybody? Today, I'm gonna to show you how to culture copepods. So what are copepods exactly? Well, a copepod is a zooplankton that's distantly related to crustaceans such as shrimp and crabs. And copepods are one of the most easily recognized types of zooplankton that are found in saltwater, freshwater, and even underground caverns, and also in our aquariums. And did you know that there are over 12,000 different types of copepods? However, the most common copepods in the saltwater aquarium hobby are the Tisby, the Tigger Pods, and the Apex Pods. So which copepods should you culture? By far, the easiest ones to actually culture in a container like this for your aquarium is gonna be the Tig Pods or the Tiger Pods. So that's what we're gonna be culturing today. The second easiest copepod to actually culture is the Tisby Pod, and you can also culture those in a vessel like this pretty easily. But they are much smaller than your Tigger Pods. There's several places you can actually pick up your pods. Most notably, people pick them up from Reef Nutrition, Algae Barn. You can even buy them on eBay or Amazon. And a few other places you can buy your pods from are Todd's Pods, Pod Your Reef, and Aquaculture Nursery Farms. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it and let's set up this culture. So the items you're going to need are a culturing vessel, which this one is just a two gallon or two and a half gallon container that I bought off Amazon. You'll need an air pump, airline, either a rigid airline tube or an air stone. Either one will work perfectly. It's just personal preference, whatever you like. I personally like to use this rigid airline tubing because you can get just bigger bubbles more kind of frequently instead of little tiny bubbles out of the air stone here. You're going to need an adjustable air valve here. I'm sure you've seen these before. Obviously, you're going to need your copepods some phytoplankton. I actually make my own in-house that you can see right behind me and I'll just use my own uh, phytoplankton. Now, this is pretty much all you're gonna need here. There's some optional items that you can add that will make your culture just a little bit easier and a little bit faster to grow. You can add some bacteria. You can add your light. Now, the copepods don't necessarily need a light, but when you have a light on your culture, Algae starts to grow all along your container here, and the copepods will eat that and feed on that versus just solely feeding on the phytoplankton. And one thing I want to note, if you have your air pump like sitting level or below your culture container, you're going to want to pick up a little airline check valve because if you have your culture running and your electricity goes out for whatever reason, this water could actually create a siphon and go right back down to your pump. And if you have one of these little check valves, it'll stop that from happening. However, if you just simply set your pump up above your culture, you don't have to worry about getting this little check valve. And last but not least, once you're ready to start harvesting your copepods, you're gonna want some kind of a sieve. Now this one is a 120 micron sieve. It'll only pretty much just harvest out the adults. Some of the eggs will still fall through this little screen. So if you wanna harvest the eggs and the adults, you want to get a 52 or 53 micron screen. So, and I'm going to put links to everything that you see here down in the description. So it'll be a lot easier for you to find everything. Now, I don't recommend that you add live rock, live sand, or even shadow to your culture, because if you start adding that stuff in there, you could be actually introducing other microorganisms that could outcompete your culture. If you want to add a copepod hotel to your culture, that's completely fine. You just want to make sure that it's brand new and it hasn't been in an aquarium before. Bacteria is also a good thing to add. It's not going to outcompete your culture. The only thing it's going to do is keep your ammonia low and your nitrates low. All right, so in your culture here, you want to start with freshly mixed salt water. I let mine run for about a day or so, at least 24 hours, just to make sure everything's all mixed up. And you don't want to use tank water because, again, you could be introducing other microorganisms that could outcompete your culture. So start with fresh salt water. I've got our tig pods here, tiger pods from Algae Barn. I'm just gonna add these in here real quick. All 
Alrighty, we can put our lid back on, get our air pump set up now. And I've got a pre-cut section of my airline because it's gonna go on my stand right behind me. So I've already measured it out perfectly. So I got my airline ready. Now all I need to do, take my scissors. I'm just gonna cut like a little two inch piece of airline off right here. I'm gonna put this on the pump right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and add my check valve. And I'm gonna cut another two inch piece off the airline here. And now I'm gonna add my adjustable air valve here. Next, we just add the rest of the airline hose here. We got the air pump, a small piece of airline tubing right here. We've got our check valve here, another little piece of airline tubing, and then we've got our adjustable air valve right here. And I like to use the rigid airline tubing simply because it's a lot easier to put it in this vessel that I'm using right here. So I just put the airline tubing right on the rigid airline tubing. I've got a hole already drilled on the top of my container. So I simply put this right down in here and that's it. So now all we have to do is plug up our air pump and then feed the copepods. Okay, so we have the air pump hooked up. So now all we gotta do is open up the air valve. Okay, so we got that set there. I've got about maybe three to five bubbles going every second. You don't want this thing going absolutely crazy like if you're culturing phytoplankton or something because if you have this thing going wide open, all the bubbles, you're just gonna slosh around all the copepods, hit them against the wall and all that stuff and it, it'll probably just end up killing them. So all you really need to do is make sure that the surface of the water is moving. That way the oxygen and the CO2 can kind of interchange and they won't suffocate in here. Let's go ahead and feed these copepods here with our phytoplankton. And by the way, if you have any questions about this whole process or if there's anything I missed, go ahead and leave a comment down below and I'll answer anything you have. Now, when it comes to feeding your copepods, you just wanna add just a little bit of phytoplankton in there until it tints the water green a little bit. And then when it gets clear, go ahead and add a little bit more in there. You may have to do this every day or every other day. It just kinda depends on how big your culture is. Obviously, the larger your culture is, the more often you're gonna to have to add phytoplankton. Talking about phytoplankton, you've got several different brands of phytoplankton you can buy. You've got Reef Nutrition's Phyto Feast, Algae Barn has some, Todd's Pods has a strain that they call their Sin CD Brew, and also you can get some off of Amazon from Mercer of Montana, which that's also a very good company. And I also sell some as well. All right, so I'm just going to lightly tint the water here. Right, that's probably perfect right there. A lot of it is just sinking to the bottom right now, but the air bubbles, it'll go ahead and mix it all up in the container. So yeah, this is pretty much what you want it to look like. You wanna keep your eye on it for like the first few days or so to make sure that this doesn't go clear. So once it goes clear, just go ahead and add a little bit more to it. If you wanna make sure you have plenty of phytoplankton stored up, because as your culture grows, your pods will consume phytoplankton so quick that you may not be able to afford to keep buying the little eight ounce or 16 ounce bottles of phyto just over and over and over and over again. A much cheaper and better option is to go ahead and culture your own phytoplankton. And actually, I recommend doing this before you start thinking about setting up a copepod culture. It's, it's a very easy process, it's super affordable, and all you really need are the same items you just used to set up a copepod culture. And if you want to learn more about how to culture your own phytoplankton, tap the video that's on your screen right now.